Appetite Gunners, the Brady Campaign, the Violence Policy Center, the George Soros groups, with a bunch of fake science being cooked up to claim that guns are causing waves of, 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 of shootings, when in truth, he was saying, uh, the numbers we have from the Justice Department are about 52% mass shootings and general shootings uh, down since 1992. He was saying, though, that's how the Justice Department cooks them. It's more like 60. But we all saw it in the news a month ago where it was admitted that the FBI cooked numbers under orders on mass shootings from the Justice Department to brainwash the public, as the Attorney General publicly said they would do. Now, joining us is the man in the middle of it all, uh, right there on Capitol Hill, every day, tracking what's happening, the conscience of the NRA, as the NRA board member Ted Nugent has said, without GOA, the NRA wouldn't have made their more hardcore turn, thank God, in the last three or four years. And I'm, I'm not bragging, it's a fact, a decade ago, I really pushed Larry Pratt, who's a classy gentleman, uh, to go after the NRA and their milk toast board to get on the offense. And that's happened. Their rhetoric has matched the reality of the tyranny we're facing. Sure, I mean, saying Obama's becoming a dictator sounds radical, but it's true. Open borders, Benghazi, Fast and Furious, IRS escape. You have to match the reality with the rhetoric. <sighs> a lot of times people end up going under tyranny because they just can't believe it's happening to them. And that's in basic criminology. We know Obama promised to sign on to the U.N. Treaty. We know Obama promised to use executive power and other international agreements to go after the Second Amendment. They're banning imports. They're going after ammo. They're not letting the military sell the brass like they used to do. Uh, there's a whole program. They've got the ATF harassing gun shops. Veterans are being put on no buy list with, with no evidence of anything. There is a major cold war against the Second Amendment, but... Lot said, get ready, the new offensive is going to launch in the next few months into the campaign. The expert, Larry Pratt of GunOwners.org, joins us to the end of the hour. They have a powerful article at GunOwners.org. The story is mirrored at Infowars.com. And I want to give him the floor as best I can to break all this down. Headline, secret deal could contain a myriad of gun control restrictions. Uh, ammo bans, will you install gun control be rammed on our throats? And then we've got the quotes of people in the system saying they'll use this to do it, and it's secret. Congress can't see it. They're trying to give the president fast-track authority. WikiLeaks stole, to their credit, uh, the Death Star plans last year, but uh, because they're leftists, though, only leaked the Internet provision that's worse than SOPA and CISPA. So it's on. Internet taxes, regulations, Internet IDs, it's on. Just like your cell phone tracks you, the internet now will, no way to get around it. It's on. So Larry Pratt, uh, I think it's clear to say the next imperial offensive against the Republic is on. You're the general up there in the war room. Please give us the breakdown on exactly what cocktail of attacks are coming and what this secret treaty means. Oh, hi, Alex. Thanks so much for uh, having an interest in this. I think that's going to be very helpful. The... Um, uh, members of Congress, uh, some at least some of the more liberal ones, might say, well, yeah, you, uh, you can find out what's in the uh, proposed treaty. Uh, yeah, right. You can go to a locked room in a basement, surrendering your cell phone before you get there. No pictures, no dictating notes to anybody, nothing with which to write. And then you may look at the proposed legislation one section at a time. And this is from the most open administration ever. <laughs> <laughs> you just, I mean, it, I guess we have to laugh, otherwise we'd be in a, in a white suit coat. Uh, this is just absolutely outrageous. And one of the dangers... And there, there's got to be a myriad of dangers in this approach to legislation. But right now, the bill is amendable. It's just a bill, and it's going to give authority uh, to the president to negotiate a treaty. And when that treaty comes back, the way this thing is being set up, it'll take two-thirds of the Senate to overturn whatever might be in there. No amendments. And so this is the time 
to make any, say, protection amendments for the Second Amendment. And so far, we haven't been able to, to get this of enough concern for a member of the Senate to say, okay, yeah, we got to put in an amendment blocking anything to do with ammunition or firearms, nothing to do with exports, nothing to do with imports, or whatever else our dear leader might think of to put into uh, this legislation, which will become a treaty. Uh, it's really outrageous, and they're treating us like mushrooms in a cave, and I won't get into the weeds on how you feed those mushrooms, but it's not pretty. Well, your article at gunowners.org breaks down the subsections of what we know the U.N.-style gun control, he says he'll do by treaty. I want to get an update on the U.N. treaty. Top secret TPP means you won't know what's in the bill. Again, the TPP is secret. This would just be a bill, basically, I guess, authorizing it. Some Republicans are being duped. I want to talk about that. They're probably being duped by all the campaign donations. Uh, what's the strategy to beat this? If we don't make enough noise about this and force them to say, oh, I didn't see what was coming on this. Yeah, I'll vote against this or I'll at least make a motion to amend it in such a way that uh, the president can't diddle with firearms. Uh, then it's going to go right on through. It's going to take the kind of public outcry that forced the administration to pull back on banning certain AR-15 ammunition. It only is a function of heat. And as the old Senator Dirksen was so fond of saying uh, with his gravelly cigarette-affected uh, uh, voice, uh, when I feel the heat, I uh, see the light. <laughs> and they, haven't, they haven't felt the heat yet. So uh, I hope your listeners are reaching for a butane torch and will use it accordingly. Larry, we know they're coming after our guns. They've stated that's the plan. Everywhere else in the world, they've taken the guns. What is the constellation, the attack pattern? I mean, the UN treaty, this treaty, uh, the ATF coming after the, gun, the bullets. Uh, what's the main attack? Because I was talking to the professor, as I mentioned earlier, and he said he believes the biggest assault ever is about to begin. Well, the president gives every indication that Dr. Lott's concern is not frivolous. Uh, the president has said that he would use his cell phone and his pen to act when the Congress didn't act. Uh, forget that little problem about the legislation in our Constitution originating uh, with the Congress. Uh, but the president doesn't look at the Constitution as something to be obeyed. He looks at it has something to be overcome. And uh, that's what he spent the last six years doing. And uh, my concern is that now that he has no other elections for which he's ever going to be on, likely to be on the ballot, and any of the Democrats who are going to be running in 16 can plausibly say, well, the president's you know, not going to be president anymore. I'm, you know, I'm my own man. And so he, they'll have that plausible deniability. His ability to damage the Democrat name will be a lot less. And my guess is that we haven't seen the full Obama yet. He's getting ready to do it down and dirty. And, and that's the pattern. I mean, we normally see when they can pardon themselves, pardon others, uh, when they can have their party turn on them, they can take the fall and get the agenda through. And we've already seen a massive acceleration of tyranny. Uh, I mean, just opening the borders outside of law, shutting down power plants outside of law, uh, persecuting the Tea Party, not getting in trouble. And it seems to embolden this group of crooks uh, now that uh, they've gotten away with so much. I mean, in my gut, not just intellectually, in my gut, I'm just bracing. Uh, there's one other suggestion that I would make, uh, and, and again, it requires, in this case, backbone in the part of the Republican caucus, and that's asking for a lot, apparently, because uh, it, it's not just the leadership. The leadership is able to do what the leadership has been doing because the caucus has been willing to tolerate it, has not been willing to effectively push back. But the caucus could simply say on just about any spending bill, none of these funds may be used to negotiate or implement the Pacific Treaty. 
that uh, that would just put it into a screeching halt uh, because anything that they might do would be totally unauthorized and actually they wouldn't have had the funds to do it at all. Um, of course, they really ought to be impeaching this Jasper, but clearly they don't have the backbone for that. But at least cutting the funds off is a an obvious solution. The founders gave it to us uh, in by 